All right, next up we're going to talk about uh, New Guinea. Um, New Guinea is a, uh, um, an island um, and it's um, in the vicinity of Australia. And it, in fact, was connected to the uh, larger landmass that we call Sahul. We talked a little bit about this before. Um, <clears throat> in the glacial uh, era, uh, this was uh, a larger landmass because the sea levels were uh, lower. And so New Guinea, Australia, and Tasmania were all connected to one another. And uh, after the glacial period, um, <clears throat> after the Ice Ages, it became uh, separated into a large island. Um, and it's so large, in fact, that it's d divided into, into uh, a couple of different um, uh, countries, in fact. So there's the Irian Jaya, which is a province of Indonesia uh, in the west of the island, and Papua, which is the, um, in the east of the island. Um, and the whole island is, uh, is considered to be uh, New Guinea. Um, <clears throat> and the mountains... Uh, there are mountains which run along the entire length of the island, uh, which uh, create this uh, highland zone, this highland area. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> cultural anthropologists have studied uh, um, the cultures in Papua New Guinea, or in, in New Guinea in general, uh, for many years. Uh, they're um, they're uh, interesting uh, groups of people to study for um, cultural anthropologists. And as a consequence, we've known a lot about their modern day subsistence strategies. Um, they're interesting to cultural anthropologists because they practice um, uh, certain types of economic and social practices that you don't find very many other places. And so they're, uh, they're uh, interesting for us to, um, to study. Um, but their modern-day economic and social practices are reliant upon especially pigs and sweet potatoes. But pigs and sweet potatoes are not indigenous to that location. Uh, we're not quite sure where the pigs came from, although pigs were domesticated uh, on the mainland uh, of Asia, so it's possible that they came in from that direction. Um, sweet potatoes, however, um, are, were, are from South America. And there's no evidence that uh, there's any prehistoric connection between New Guinea and South America. Um, and so uh, it's thought that potatoes uh, in, in these particular varieties were bought by Spanish sailors in the 16th century um, uh, coming from South America, possibly through the Philippines. Um, so their economy today, uh, which is so interesting to cultural anthropologists, is based upon fairly recent introductions. Um, so it's uh, the, their subsistence agriculture and subsistence her, uh, herding and, and uh, husbandry of, of uh, pigs uh, are extremely important to their uh, social organization. And this is what is uh, so interesting that sweet potatoes are, tend to be eaten by the pigs, um, but pigs are an identifier of political power. And so uh, you are powerful by association, by having big storerooms of uh, sweet potatoes um, and uh, having the access to create big giant feasts uh, by uh, having pigs as well. So this is interesting in its own right, but it doesn't tell us very much about uh, how uh, the New Guineans, um, uh, uh, the people in New Guinea, um, first started to uh, create these villages and uh, domesticated um, uh, strategies for survival. More recent years, however, have shown that uh, um, new techniques, and this is where science and archaeology become uh, very Im important, uh, hard sciences and, and archaeology become very important partners, that things like uh, starch analysis of starch from uh, things like um, tools. Uh, so if you're grinding plant material uh, with a grinding stone, you're doing it for the purpose of trying to pulverize it into some sort of a paste or a, a powder or something like that. You're trying to make flour, you're trying to make uh, paste or something like that. Now, <clears throat> you typically take 
the product and you use it. But on the grinding stones, some traces are left on the stone itself. And if that's not properly cleaned, um, properly, if it's not cleaned thoroughly, uh, archaeologists can actually access that, scrape off some of the, the residue on the stones, and even microscopic amounts um, can tell us a little bit about what was being ground. And that's a technique that's only been developed in recent years that have allowed us uh, to understand a little bit more about uh, New Guinean um, uh, domestication. And it was a surprise to us that it seems as though they were actually active domesticators of plants, especially. Now, it's unusual <coughs> because what we understand uh, for New Guinea is that they weren't, unlike the places we've seen uh, so far, using seed crops. So uh, I've even described the process of how you take a few of the seed grains and you plant them for seeds the, you know, the next harvest time. Uh, but the domesticated plants coming from, uh, from New Guinea uh, do not seem, they, they don't grow that way. They're not seed plants. You have things like yams, uh, bananas, taro, which may have been introduced, and, and maybe even sugarcane. These are all things that don't really grow from seed. Um, the cultivation techniques must have involved a, a different way of thinking about domestication. Transplanting the suckers or the sh cuttings or shoots, if you know anything about gardening, um, you, it means you're actually grafting or you're uh, growing roots out of a living structure. Uh, so uh, things like tubers, um, bananas, um, uh, taro, and sugarcane, these are all have different ways of growing than just taking a seed of like wheat, planting it in the ground, and letting it do its thing. You've got to actually think a little bit more about how these plants grow, and you've got to understand that. So there must also be a different um, way of thinking about how domestication in New Guinea took place. Unfortunately, we don't know a lot about that. Um, and uh, the earliest human occupation of New Guinea uh, was probably uh, coastal sites um, uh, about 40,000 years ago. Once again, this was the uh, part of Sahul, which is now, uh, which is the largest of the, uh, the remaining places of Sahul is Australia, but also Tasmania and New Guinea, um, which are now separate islands. Um, but it was a uh, their coastal sites in New Guinea are probably the earliest human op occupation, and in the highlands of New Guinea, <clears throat> uh, probably about thirty thousand years ago, uh, Kosipe Yuku site um, uh, shows hunting and gathering, wide range of hunting hunted animals, but no domesticated plants or animals this early. There are stone axes from about 10,000 years ago. And most of these highland sites are located uh, that we find in New Guinea are located in caves. There are some villages, the Wanlek village site from about 6,000 years has circular houses, a large central structure, which tells us there may have been some communal activity, which shows a little bit about social structure. Um, polished stone axes may have been high valued uh, goods, but no pottery. Uh, so pottery wasn't really used or in, uh, independently invented or even borrowed uh, until about 800 years ago. So uh, um, <clears throat> one of the reasons why I say we don't understand a lot about the ways that, uh, that people were thinking when they were domesticating is because we don't have a lot of evidence for the villages from these early domesticated sites. Some of our best evidence comes from not an inhabitation area, but a, uh, a swamp. And this swamp uh, is, was a field system. So this has been excavated as human intervention on a landscape. And so it's not people building homes, but building an environment uh, and building uh, some of the, the, these fields were drained by a system of swamp drainage canals. And so people came to a swamp and didn't say, hey, let's move on, this is not really very good for us. They said, let's change this landscape. That requires a lot of labor, it requires a lot of skill and understanding, and it requires uh, probably some kind of um, uh, 
social structure with a hierarchy to it. So people are, uh, some people are better at these tasks, some people are better at managing those people with those tasks. Um, there are uh, a series of canals um, uh, the earliest of which uh, are simple, and those date to about 10,000 years ago. There's also uh, pits and mounds of, of earth, uh, and they become more complex. And uh, the 6,500 years ago, uh, this was inhabited, and so 10,000 years ago, 6,500 years ago, 4,000 years ago, and then finally terminating occupation of this area about 3,000 years ago. There are some tools that are left behind, as I said, and taro uh, has been found, which is not native to this area, but also phytoliths. These are um, uh, phytoliths uh, is our plant remains, but they're like a shell around pollen uh, that is um, that is mineral in content, so it doesn't degrade. So they're microscopic, tiny, 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 microscopic uh, um, uh, pieces of, um, of minerals that encase pollen. And so phytoliths have been found in some of these uh, uh, contexts that show that bananas were there. Um, <clears throat> and uh, bananas were being developed, but uh, about 6,500 years ago, the climate changed, and this, what was once a swamp, uh, became uh, grassland and that is unsuitable uh, for bananas to grow in the wild which meant that humans must have been involved in, in intervening in cultivating them uh, also at the site of Kana we see this so um, so it seems as though bananas may have been a, a, a wild species that were being managed and when they started to die off they became became taken over uh, by humans intervened in their perpetuation and domesticated as a as a uh, as a, a uh, consequence so unfortunately we don't have much better information about the human communities and how the where and where they lived uh, from these periods but it does show that this was a long development uh, in conjunction what was locally available uh, responding to uh, stressful situations like climate change, um, possibly incorporating some borrowed uh, foods or uh, um, uh, even technologies later on, uh, and but of course indigenous development of uh, a different type of food source uh, um, uh, in terms of uh, uh, not seed crops. Uh, and uh, grains that we see most other places. All right, that's all I uh, have for New Guinea, um, and uh, I'll catch you on the next video.